An important part of the bioregional story is cities. How can cities become more ecologically minded in their governance, commercial life, and culture? In most cities, real estate developers, corporations, politicians, and bureaucracies are calling the shot. Developers and super rich people usually have great sway over mayors and city governments, which for their part, like to consolidate and centralize power. They like to run things from the top down, not from the neighborhood or citizen level. Meanwhile, tech platforms like Airbnb are bidding up housing prices and forcing people to move, with the result that once vibrant neighborhoods are being converted into tourist rentals. Uber has pulled off the fiendish trick of building a business based on using other people's cars while using algorithms to pay people as little as possible. The commons paradigm is combating these efforts. In recent years, especially in Europe, groups of commons have built new templates for urban peer governance. Think open source as applied to city life. The goal is how to re-engineer how urban spaces and policy are designed from the bottom up. Citizen residents should have greater self-determination. A remarkable historical example is how ordinary people built hundreds of community gardens in New York City in the 1990s. As neighborhoods were struggling with trashed out abandoned lots, groups of self-organized green gorillas began to cut fences and use use sledgehammers to smash sidewalks to plant trees. And, And why not? The government wasn't doing anything to improve the neighborhoods. Through this sort of action by brave souls and neighborhood teams, over 800 community gardens sprang up in the city's five boroughs, triggering an economic and social revival of many neighborhoods. This ethic of peer organization plays out all the time in cities where commoners step up to meet their own needs, usually without the help of the city, banks, or rich people. In Todd Morden, England, in 2008, A woman planted vegetables in her front yard and invited people to help themselves. The project inspired the creation of 100 so-called incredible edible groups across the UK that grow and share open source food, as they call it, to give to the hungry and passers-by and to encourage local food self-sufficiency. In Amsterdam, the I Can Change the World With My Two Hands commons has organized numerous projects to promote local food production, composting, and rainwater collection. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, a network of people invented a scheme to harvest fruit from urban trees that would otherwise or was falling to the ground and rotting. The commoners mapped the locations of more than 100 trees and arbors, harvested the fruit with permission from the owners, and produced about 5,000 pounds of jam, ciders, and preserves every year. In Portland, Oregon, the City Repair Project makes city life more lively by organizing the public to do art installations, block parties, free cycle projects, buy local campaigns, and festivals. The groups invited residents to beautify their streets and neighborhoods through intersection painting, for example. Operating on their own agenda, but with the consent and support of the city government, it's built housing for the homeless and taught people urban permaculture. Urban commons are not just some small-scale thing. It can be citywide and involve regional infrastructure. In Spain, a grassroots cooperative known as GuifiNet provides Wi-Fi service to tens of thousands of users in Catalonia. Volunteers and donations helped build the GuifiNet infrastructure, which now extends over 35,000 internet nodes in the region, many in rural areas that broadband companies had bypassed, saying they weren't profitable enough. Participatory budgeting has taken off in dozens of cities around the world. This is a way for ordinary citizens to decide how a portion of the public budget will be spent. The, The idea was first launched in Porto Alegre, Brazil, in 1989, when citizens were given the chance to allocate $200 million of the city budget. Participatory budgeting is now being used not only at the county and municipal levels, but in individual school districts, community housing, and even nonprofit organizations. Most urban commons projects help people reduce their dependence on corporations in the state while generating significant shareable benefits for themselves. 
Neil Gorenflow of the group Shareable described their appeal well. He said, urban commons situate residents as the key actors, not markets, technologies, or governments, at a time when people feel increasingly powerless. Another great example of this is time banking. It's a kind of service barter system that lets people meet their needs without money uh, in scores of cities around the world. Give someone an hour of your time for lawn mowing or running errands or providing elder care, and you can get a time credit that can be spent on things to meet your needs. This is all about meeting needs and building social connections in places where money is scarce. It's helped low-income people and the elderly create their own neighborhood-based health insurance systems, libraries for garden and household tools, and little book libraries. Makerspaces and Fab Labs have been incubators for a new type of bioregionalism by empowering amateurs and young people and tech experts to come together. They all tinker, invent, and co-learn from each other. There's more than 1,800 Fab Labs in over 100 countries around the world that provide these kind of open spaces for training and uh, a variety of machines that let people make their own electronics, household items, and artworks. The city of Barcelona's renowned network of specialized fab labs may be at the vanguard of these efforts. It's been using tech systems to make urban biodiversity more visible and creating data systems uh, that can improve the functioning of city life. Many urban commons initiatives are being advanced by a so-called co-cities movement, especially through what are called LabGov projects, which stands for Laboratories for the Governance of Cities as a Commons. These projects orchestrate collaborative partnerships between city governments, commoners, and a variety of other partners to improve neighborhoods, empower citizens, and address ecological concerns in the city. Some bioregions are actively trying to connect urban centers with rural agriculture. There's a lot of innovation going on here through things like regional food hubs, eco-minded food and fiber systems, and new sorts of metrics for assessing the health of bioregions. It's going to take many, many overlapping efforts for the struggle for bioregional action to reach a tipping point. But we already know that many of the pathways that can get us there exist. But land has to be decommodified and treated as shared wealth. Urban commons are needed to reclaim bottom-up democratic governance. Commoners themselves can instigate countless actions directly, setting the pace for government, and good faith commons public partnerships can accelerate all of these efforts. There's a lot to do, but there's already some great things happening.